I had that thing this morning, I've really got to watch time because I ramble a lot. I had that thing this morning where you're watching people's talks and you're like, oh, this is, this is great. Oh, it's, it's really similar to what I'm doing. So that was quite scary. Um, but luckily, I'm kind of uh, building on what we discussed this morning, which was around how you measure impact as a team. And I'm talking about how we use that to kind of fix the agile process, which probably some of you work in. Um, before we do that, I work for the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Um, which is a wonderful, wonderful organization that I'm really lucky to be a part of. Um, is there anyone else here in the crowd who works for the Raspberry Pi Foundation? Yes, that's Jonic. All right, brilliant. Um, if uh, if you, you grow bored, perhaps you've got a post-lunch weariness, or you don't like my voice, um, go on Code Club, which we, we, we run, um, and, and volunteer to teach kids to code. You don't have to be a developer, it's wonderful. Or Code a Dojo, in fact, which is also a part of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. So that's something really good to do if you are bored. Um, I know it's really hard to target these things. Um, some of this might be really old news to some of you. I apologize so much. But you know, just rein it in and humor me um, and volunteer to do some good. Um, how am I doing for time? Cheers, Rick. There's Rick. Everyone can see how I'm doing. If you get bored as well, you can like, look at Rick and go, oh, rubbish. Um, so <laughs> what is the problem? So first of all, quick show of hands. Who works in like an agile place? You do your first. OK, so, so not as many as you would have expected, but quite a few of you. Um, Agile, for those of you who don't know, um, kind of sprung from development. And it's a way of like getting fast feedback um, and, and kind of instead of like defining everything, everything up front, just like uh, work more iteratively on, on stuff. Um, so Agile's great um, compared to what we used to do for a certain class of problem. It's great. Um, we used to spend ages with people you don't know doing stuff up front, and then you, as a developer, which I, which I am, you'd sit at a desk and someone come up to you with a big list and go, build this, idiot. And you'd have to build it. Sometimes they wouldn't say idiot, but you could hear it. Um, and it was awful, actually. It was a terrible way to spend your life. Um, and actually, you know, Agile is great, but it, I kind of have some problems with it, um, having done it um, for quite a while now. Um, this, is not, no, this is not what I look for. If you can find the customer here, can anyone see the customer? The customer's over here on the right, and they're just about to be hit by the Agile release train, um, <laughs> <laughs> which is awesome. Um, and you'll see there's no loop. And, and this is kind of what Agile has evolved into in a certain class of organization. And this might not be one that you're all familiar with, but at large scale organizations, Agile is really complicated. And actually, the distance from the Agile, I, I want to point, not tall enough, the Agile team down here is really distant from the epic owners up there and the customers over here. And it actually became kind of grim. Um, and it kind of reminded me of how we used to work. Um, time, seven minutes, cool. Um, so this is one of the ways that you measure Agile teams. You do points. Um, and actually, what was happening was that we were being measured on how fast we <laughs> just ring a bell. I object to that. Um, <laughs> that's not even funny. Was that you, Johnny? Um, we, we measure on points. So we start to, you, know, you start guessing how much work you're going to do, and then, um, and then sort of saying, oh, we did 50 points. Um, and so according to sort of Agile theory, one way of saying, well, actually, this first sprint was great. We did 50, and we thought we were going to do 46. And another way might be this one, Sprint C, where we, we thought we were going to do 45, we did 44. You know, amazing. And actually, which was most successful? Probably Sprint B, where we did that thing where the user can just sign up with the email. And actually, the value was getting lost, right? Like, what we were doing is, is we, weren't, um, we weren't measuring the actual impact of what we did. We just became obsessed with performance improvements internally. Um, so I went back to the Agile Manifesto, right? Agile maybe isn't so great. I'll go back to the Manifesto. What went wrong? And actually, there was two points in it. And co customer collaboration over contract negotiation and responding to change over following a plan. And some of this has got lost. Um, it's got lost in, I used to be a Flash developer, it's got lost in kind of enterprise Agile. Like, it, it's kind of got burned away somewhere. Um, yeah, if you used to be a Flash developer, this is, sort of, this is like bread and butter. This is a real story. Amazing, good times. And you know, if, you, if you're lucky, you'll get a story like this. You might do a bit of user research. Um, if you're lucky, you'll be on a cross-functional team, and your designers and developers will be working together. Um, you might put in some analytics and, and, and see how it went. And then you'll kind of, if it went really well, um, you might be lucky, and you might get to showcase it to the rest of the organization. You might be in that kind of organization where you tell your manager, and your manager presents it to the CEO in his one-to-one -one and takes all the credit. Who knows? Um, but this is kind of broken, actually. And it's broken because there's no constant measurement of what's going on. And, and a lot of this stuff is just about someone has an idea. We decide to measure it, and they just, I'm going to show the world what great ideas we've had. And they accumulate over time. Anyone who's worked on a software project for a long time knows that 
they get bigger and bigger, and we just add features, you know, because people don't delete stuff. They don't delete stuff because of this thing called the sunk cost fallacy. And um, Concord's a great example of that. The British government, there's internal memos at the time, 4 minutes, 43, um, where, <laughs> where the government is saying, this is a ridiculous project, it's costing us a fortune. But they kept going because they'd already invested so much, and we apply this mentally to software, and we shouldn't. So what do we do? Um, <laughs> I love this guy. He's called Ars Arsenius. Um, uh, he's, uh, I'm not, I thought it was good for a religious setting, so I thought I'd put something. Um, and, he, and he said, be mindful lest you labor in vain. Um, and really, it's all about um, what I'm going to talk about here is how you can change this model where you take a new idea, a new feature, you maybe do some work, you deliver it, you see how it goes, and you leave it. So one thing, is, as was so wonderfully um, elucidated this morning by some much more competent presenters was focusing on user needs, super important. You have to ask yourself if the thing that you are building contributes to your overall purpose. You have to focus on the outcome of what you're doing and not a contract, and this is really difficult, and the star is like it's not legal advice. But you need to focus on what you're actually trying to do, not, you know, I have agreed that I will deliver 45 points. Um, this is interesting because there was a measurement conversation this morning. I'm very much from this perspective, which is that you measure everything because you don't know what you don't know. And actually, disk storage isn't a problem. Do you know what I mean? The systems aren't a problem. Measure all the things. And there's another thing that, um, you know, most people's talks can be one slide. This is my slide. Um, I really believe in monitoring your metrics the same way you monitor your infrastructure. So if you have, like, infrastructure alerting, you get an alert when your server explodes or whatever, or when, um, yeah. You should monitor your user journeys the same way. So if you know that there's a tolerance for people registering, you should monitor that and be alerted if, if, if that goes outside of tolerance. And that way you can possibly, you can pop properly, sorry, see the impact of what you've done. Um, and what I mean is you need a more systematic mechanism of learning than we have. Because if you put in those kind of metrics, they exist forever. And over time you can, um, you can work out if what you're doing actually has value and how it changes over time. And this is missing from Agile. Like, this isn't part of the system, you know? It's like you deliver a sprint, you do some work, or scrum specifically, you deliver a sprint, you do some work, you measure it, you move on. You need these metrics in place all the time so you know when you need to take stuff out. Um, sorry, I need to drink. Some of this stuff isn't obvious. Like, you can't um, always know from data about what your system is doing. And there's a bunch of stuff that you just need to listen to what your users are doing through continuous research, not just at, at certain spots. Um, and, you know, there's a bunch of things that you can't measure. Um, the conversation this morning about the hierarchy of needs, you can't measure some of that stuff. So you need to manage it. You need to have ways of, other ways of dealing with it. Um, this is really cheap. If you work for a small agency or a small organization, maybe you're a small startup, ship Google Analytics. The Google Analytics team did a thing called AutoTrack, ship that. Google Analytics has a thing called custom alerts, so you can set up these alert tolerances and be notified when your things change. So if you deliver a feature about improving your onboarding process, set up that, get it done, and you'll get alerted, get alerted for the rest of your life <laughs> about how that's going, and you can actually see what difference the thing you are building is having. And don't be afraid to delete stuff. If the thing that you have built doesn't do what it's supposed to do, delete it. Do you know what I mean? It's rubbish. It doesn't work. Um, to recap, Breathe. Um, <laughs> Agile, as practiced in most organizations, is missing this systematic, continuous analysis of impact, um, at least in my experience. Um, a lot of it is focused on internal optimization of fast delivery um, and kind of internal requirements. Um, by doing this proper systematic alerting over time, bundling in with your metrics, you can actually find out what your system's doing, and you can remove things with no value so that over time your system doesn't just grow into this unbearable monster. This is one thing I've really become interested in the last four years. Um, loads of this stuff's already been talked about. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's like, this is, I had this great idea. And, and actually, if you go back to sort of engineering specifically, um, you will find much more intelligent people. So 2005, um, the Butler Group were talking about worth-based development. Um, we'll find a way to share these links. James Sturges at Lockheed Martin, um, he had this idea about value-driven design. Again, you can read about this. It's super interesting. Um, the expected utility theory, which I won't read out because I have no seconds left. 
Um, <laughs> uh, Martin Fowler, again, is brilliant. And this is kind of a, another move on from it, which is by Mary, I won't try and pronounce that surname, which is about um, how this can avoid you becoming a cost center, which is terrible. Um, that is it. It was quite fast. I gabbled a bit, but it was OK. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks, David. Um, and, and in particular, thanks for drawing a lot of things that we've already started to talk about together. Into, in, it picked up on an awful lot. Um, dashboards I, was something I, I kept thinking you were about to say. It, it <laughs> right. felt like it, it, was, it was part and parcel as well. Yeah, so, I mean, yeah, dashboards are um, super useful and important. And I definitely, um, I'm really into this idea that you get proactively, um, as well as dashboards, you actually get told in advance if there's a problem, yeah. um, which is super important. Yeah. So a, a quick practical question. Mm -hmm. um, if if uh, my, my Agile team is now uh, measuring their metrics like they're measuring their, their infrastructure, mm -hmm. and we're listening to our ecosystem, mm -hmm. how, on a practical note, do we actually feel, feed that into team behavior? Who, who does what differently? Sure, yeah, that's a really good question. Um, I think the big thing is that you, um, as part of you developing a feature, so as your animated penguin, that you, uh, as well as just shipping the code, like when you ship the code, you don't sit back and go, yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you wait, you give it time, and you make sure that the metrics are in there so you know if the animated penguin is working. Um, so the difference is, is that you look constantly at how your features are doing over time, okay. not just for a time window. Okay, and everybody in the team is doing that continuous, ongoing monitoring. Yeah, definitely. And a lot of this, like if you're from an e-commerce background, which I know some of the presenters are this morning, like you, you do this on certain parts, but no one really does it systematically like this, including cool. me. <laughs> <laughs> No, you were just nodding yeah. enthusiastically. Just nodding. Yeah, good. <laughs> um, as, as, as David put his finger on something for anybody, um, is this like any aha moments? Like we work agile, but that, that's, that was definitely the thing that was missing. Has, has anybody got? Yes, please. Yeah. No, I think the product owners definitely have been on teams I've been a part of, and they definitely do own impact in some senses. I think the big thing for me is. Um, the idea of like this kind of empowers the whole team to be part of that change and to understand the impact of their work um, and not kind of have it reported through a proxy. Um, and for certain features, like the success of it is something that you get, um, you get proactively notified on failure, which isn't going to happen in the kind of product owner thing. I think also product owners, in my experience, tend to be in certain organizations focused on just delivering new features all the time, and they forget about this old stuff. You know what I mean? So if you've got those old measurements in place, it'll always remind you. Yeah. From our panel, how does this connect to what, to what you guys have been saying? <laughs> <laughs> I, I genuinely think David's absolutely right. I, we have to move away from a delivery focus and much more onto a value focus. Um, and I think that's such an important metric. You know, the whole thing about MVP of minimum, value, of minimum viable product I've known about it as maximum valuable product rather than viable as valuable. Um, and I think that that's the key thing is we're delivering things to deliver value. We're delivering things to fulfill a user need. And I think we have to remind ourselves when we release things, you know, to understand what the values are and how those drive against the KPIs we're measuring as a business or an organization. Yeah, yeah. So you said measure everything, but then work out which of that stuff that you're measuring is actually telling you what the value is rather than... Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Part part of what gets lost is accountability as well. It's like you need to have these, uh, the ability to sort of say, okay, what actually has happened? And I think sometimes it's, it's just forward momentum without any accountability. Okay, uh, stop and ask, ask why did this happen? Mm. Yeah. yeah. And it's attrition over time. Like, as, um, it, those of you who do like client work for people, you'll know this, that you'll be um, recruited to make a product, you know, and you'll do the thing. And then you'll walk away like it's a done job, and it's not done at all. And it's a way for you to continue to add value with your clients as well. You can look at it like that. Um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, a, a lot of ideas that we'll unpack gradually. And, and when you do, please do find David and ask him some more questions. Um, another round of applause, please, for David. Thank you.